the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Saturday live hey. stream. We are talking. We have a different setup Hello. this week. As you can see, lights are different. We're trying something different tonight just to play around with, with settings and see what we can do. Um, and uh, we're just going to try and see what happens. So, hello. It's been a week since we last talked. It is the day after Christmas in the United States of America. Um, how have you guys been? How's your How's your week been? Frosty. Mm. <laughs> it's been good. Good. <laughs> Frosty, indeed. Mm -hmm. It's been good. It's been good. It's, um, you know, just kind of nice and quiet. You know, everyone's doing the, the COVID thing, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's all good. And... Um, just enabled um, me to watch more anime. Actually, I have a Team Four Star. Okay. Stuff. <laughs> How about you guys? Genshin Impact. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Genshin Impact. Keeping my hours. Yep. Mm. John's about two hundred and thirty-eight hours in now. I think. Oh, so gosh. no, it's it's just it's, it's not good. <laughs> I did get a chance to to finish out. <laughs> I finished out. I'm standing on a million lives. Um, oh, nice! The Maho no Tabi Tabi, the the sort of wandering witch, mm -hmm. the travel traveling witch. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Kuma 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 Bear. Mm -hmm. So I sort of I got a chance. I stepped back nice. from Genshin for a little <laughs> while to be like, okay, let's reorient our life and we'll do stuff that we're supposed to do here. Let me move away from my anime game to my anime. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, that's what's the important part. Is. Um, and then, of course, you know, rewatching Totoro another time to uh, to see what mm -hmm. more can glean from it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's 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 a holiday week. Next week, mm -hmm. presumably, will be somewhat the same mm -hmm. because the holiday is on a Friday. So. There we go. Should be hopefully. Yeah, the new season doesn't start for another couple of weeks, so yeah. time to catch up a little bit, perhaps. Yeah, Yuru Camp Two, the uh, mm -hmm. oh, oh boy, yep. oh boy, can't <laughs> wait. Um, I did see a headline saying about, about um, The Day I Became a God, June Maeda's series. I have not watched the end of it yet, but the headline okay. was, uh, June Maeda goes for the jugular. Oh, boy. <laughs> great. Great. Oh, okay. Great. Preparing self, you know. I'm oh. waiting. That's, mm. I mean, that was kind of the reason why I, I knocked everything off the, off the plate mm. as fast mm -hmm. as I could. It's because I want to start watching Same that here. now it's coming to an end yeah mm -hmm. got my zoloft got my xanax yeah. <laughs> okay i'm prepared i'm, I'm prepared mm -hmm. box um, of tissues mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah that is a that seems to be a show that's going places but uh oh boy yeah otherwise um yeah, i'll be honest not watching much um i uh, my parents got me an air fryer for christmas Ooh, cool so i've been nice. playing around with that um as Annoyed as I am that it doesn't actually fry anything. It's not actually a fryer. But that is just the, the, you know, the marketing speak. But all right, it's a, it's a convection oven. That's all it is. Um, okay. That's all these air fryers are. It's just an oven with a fan, which is fine. Like, it's, yeah. it's functional. It, it, it's, it is a good device. It's just, um, right. But um, so I, I burned some hush puppies. I burned some fries. Um, then I cooked some fries. And then I made some muffins. And then I made some fried chicken. So I've been uh, playing around quite excitedly with that to figure out, out all of its options. And I think it's going to be fun. Now, so, what qualifies cool. it as an air fryer? Are things in like a basket name. that you put in it? That's no, a... it's, just, it's just a name. They no. just call them air fryers. It's name. So it's a convection toaster oven. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's all an air fryer is. With a fan. Yeah. With a fan. fan. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. it's a convection part. Yeah. Yep. With a fan. So. Okay, well, that's... Yeah. But the hey, thing is, still a fun appliance. Exactly, and, and and the thing is, reasonably, and one of the reasons they got it for me is that my oven's been kind of on the fritz lately, um, okay. just in consistent temperatures and taking forever to heat up, stuff like that. Right. So it's nice having just a one little device you can throw, you know, fries or chicken or whatever in there, cook it, it'll be consistent. You know, it's 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 going to be a nice self-contained appliance. You know, whatever you're you're working with. Right. So it has advantages on on, on that score. Um, it's the kind of equivalent of, you know, um, a toaster oven versus a full size oven, you know, right. you're not using it for the same thing, but it's really nice having the, the toast. So, right. Well, the thing that's nice too about that, because I, I, the same kind of thing, my gas range 
started getting kind of funky. It's a magic chef, and the thing's like okay. 35, 40 years yeah. old. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the, the range Same. top yeah. works fine. Mm-hmm. The oven is like a little weird in its yeah. functionality. So um, I'd gotten a little Cuisinart convection toaster mm. oven thing. Mm-hmm. And for the cubic space in that, it took like a half an hour, 45 minutes to get the entire oven up to temperature. Mm-hmm. This thing gets to like 500 degrees in like in like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's the thing. Like, yeah, no. Okay, mm-hmm. Ga- you know, natural gas is is arguably cheaper than electricity, mm-hmm. but 45 minutes worth of like natural gas <laughs> to heat up an oven versus five minutes of electricity <laughs> to like you know char broil something like hamburgers. Yep. Uh, <laughs> You know, Absolutely. that's kind of a hard thing. So I, I yeah. totally appreciate where that where that air fryer is coming in. Right. Yep. Um, and I'm in, this, I'm in the same boat. I actually had a guy come out to look at my oven. This is fascinating anime stuff. Um, and he, um, and he <laughs> basically Goku, said. And he was Kamehameha. He, exactly, yes. <laughs> um, and heat this up to 9 or, million degrees. <laughs> 9,000. Um, 9, and, yeah, and, um, and he basically, he looked at it. And I, I complained. He said, here's the problem with your oven. It's old. You know, yeah. I, I could. You know, we could essentially replace all the parts in it for more than the cost of a new oven. You know, we could do all sorts of. Stuff. We, we could play around with it. We could make it better. But I, what do you, you know? How much do you want to do here? And I was like, fair enough. You know. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. I know you sabotaged your oven just so you could get that that <laughs> yes. oven and burner top from the onset. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I'd sabotage oh, yeah, my I saw oven pictures for that. Holy, that, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was you know. <clears throat> All right, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this is, we're good to go. Yeah, that was a beautiful, mm. beautiful oven. Mm. Was it was was it a Viking or was um, it a Viking oven? Imagine or? Viking gone like full on industrial wok capacity. It was like mm-hmm. a, a, a wow. Rio. A, something like that. A, yeah. Ro- okay. Royo yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. But just. The burner layout was amazing. So instead of the capped burner with that burns around the sides, it was a right. donut. It was like a donut shaped burner mm-hmm. so oh, that you Jesus, had flame so exterior close. and in the interior. So mm-hmm. its heat up was incredibly well, I mean, fast. Just, it's not, yeah, it fast. Yeah, heats up fast, it evens out, and it's yeah. just. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. If we'd had yeah. walk time, it would probably have been another perfect. thing I shouldn't have because <laughs> probably another thing I shouldn't have because I. It would probably play with fire at that point. Mm-hmm. 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 It could be with, with alcohol and this. Play, yeah. play with fire yeah. is fun. <laughs> Six burners to give you an idea <laughs> of like capacity. Yeah. It's, wow. Mm, yeah. Um, and a fire suppression system, as John noticed. Yep. In, in the hood, there's actually like <laughs> yeah, a whole really thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah. Just, yeah. just oh. in the off chance you set yourself, we're the whole place on fire. <laughs> <laughs> it had its own sprinkler system. <laughs> For fire to bread. Yep. It was awesome. And it could all be yours for a mere twenty thousand dollars, I'm sure. I would bet you, yeah. Mm-hmm. For that industrial style. Yeah. 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 Not yeah, cheap. Restaurant kitchen. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um but that's the kind of thing where, you know, if you're doing that. Um uh Captain Laser Eyes, yes, we will be discussing that um that thing. Uh I should probably not put the spoiler warning on while we're introducing ourselves. That's a note for next time. Um, but that is okay, because that is what we're here to do right now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Saturday night, so it's time for us to talk about anime. We're going to talk about an anime film named My Neighbor Totoro from 1988, which the three of us watched recently, and we're going to kind of get into and discuss a little bit. Um, quick sort of context around the films. This is Miyazaki's, um... Third original, you know, uh, film not part of an existing setting. So he'd done Cagliostro before, then Nausicaa, then Castle in the Sky, and now Totoro. Um, And this is part of kind of the big ramp up of Ghibli into becoming kind of a household name in Japan. Um, Nausicaa was definitely a a, a big deal, but more of kind of a, I want to say kind of a cult hit. Um, Certainly not a blockbuster at the time that I know of. Um, and then, you know, build up from there. Um, uh, each film doing successfully. So at this point, Miyazaki is certainly well known amongst anime fans. Um, this was also notable because it was part of the 
worst double feature in human history. Um, so you went to the theaters and you watched Grave of the Fireflies, and then that ended, and it moved into My Neighbor Totoro. Mm -hmm. Um, which, <laughs> granted, you need something like Totoro after Grave of the Fireflies. Yeah, you do. Um, now, and in the so, double feature, was it Grave first, then Totoro, or Totoro yes, first, then Grave? Grave first, then Totoro. Oh, that, at least they made least a good choice there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was a thing. Um, and so, um, and this is kind of an out, uh, an outgrowth, of uh, Panda Go Panda. We were familiar with that, which was a made for TV movie that Takahata and Miyazaki made based off of, uh, the, the panda craze, of uh, the late 70s, early 80s in Japan. Um, and so they're like, hey, let's do a, a thing. This was, of course, Miyazaki's last movie. Um, he, he, this was gonna, this was, you know, oh, I'm done making movies. He retired. Uh, with Totoro, right? Yeah, yeah he, he, he retired. And I think this was his first retirement in, in, oh, in fairness. Um, so he was around, he was, I think, 48 or 49 when this movie uh, premiered, um, which means he'd been, yeah, he'd been animating for you know, most of his life at that point. Um, and Totoro came out to be sort of this, this nice, pleasing family film. Um, and it's an interesting film. Uh, the... Um, the opening shots really kind of give you a, a good sense of what this movie is, um, because it starts, you get this lovely, um, upbeat opening of just these, you know, animals going around and May walking back and forth. Um, uh, Miyazaki said that he, uh, it was literally just, they got the music and they needed to time animation to it, so they're like, okay, let's make a thing go up and down and make a thing go left and right and just come up with some animals that can kind of, you know, move. It wasn't, you know, incredibly planned, it was just, let's, let's come up with something um and then you move into these this lovely imagery of the satoyama uh traditional japanese uh uh you know rice paddy based town yep. um the uh, apparently the uh the notes for, like the production notes for the movie said it's set in 1955 but okay. mia has uh, miyazaki has said they um, he he directed the staff to not make it time specific. It's meant to be fifties, early sixties, you know, roughly. And um, uh, you you start moving through, and, and you you get this um, um, just these very classic sort of elements of the truck, um, the people around. Like you very much know uh, where and when this is, uh, and you get Mei and Satsuki riding in the back of this truck. Very cheerful, very happy, um, and it really sets up the the the, the film very well. Um, this is also the first um, Ghibli film by the I can think of the art director for this, uh, but they brought him in and he became sort of the Ghibli house art director. So the the Ghibli style, if you will, in terms of backgrounds and a sort of soft style, was kind of established here, and you really do get this. You know, you you feel like uh, it's kind of one of the interesting things is they're moving into this uh, house that's um, been abandoned for a while. And so it's not new, it's not old. Um, you know, there's detritus around. Um, there's, you know, leaves scattered around. There's a bottles in the, in the, uh, the stream. Um, and so you get this interesting sort of liminal space in it. Um, so, and, uh, and then you start moving into, uh, into the movie proper. Now, what uh, experience have you guys had with Totoro uh, up to this point? Have you, had you seen it before? I've, I've seen it before, but it, it, it was a long, long time ago. It's not mm -hmm. in my wheelhouse of things that I normally watch. Sure. But just simply because it was, you know, between friends and family, you're just like, Totoro, 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 Totoro. And I was like, okay, I'll watch Totoro. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, I watch it and... Um, and then, you know, I kind of forgot, we kind of talked about this a little bit last night. I've forgotten a, a couple of scenes over mm. the years. And mm -hmm. so when they came up, it was kind of nice and refreshing. Um, I will say that having watched it this time, um, I watched it in the fashion of entertainment, meaning that I didn't really, I decided not to go, you know, mm. really, you know, deep dive mm -hmm. kind of thing of it and just kind of ride with it more this time. And, um, I got a, a bigger sense of enjoyment about it. Mm. Um, I enjoyed the opening credits more mm. um, because I, I didn't understand what it was. <laughs> I never 
Um, but you know, like when they're just, you know, they're just monitoring it's the same cells over and over again, just mm-hmm. watching through. And then, you know, the, the top and the bottom, I was just like, at first I was like, is there any meaning here? And I'm like going, well, watching it going, no, not really. Uh, <laughs> nope. just, it's a thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a thing. But I will say that um, one of the things that I'm glad I did it this way, because it, it's, um, and I think this is kind of one of the key things about Totoro is that it, it woke up um, memories of my own childhood. Oh, wow. Uh, in certain area. And uh, one of the things is that, and Brent, I know you know this, but I used to live in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is a historic Civil War town. I lived in a um, historic building. My, mm. my home was, was on a historic um, landmark site. Um, it goes all the way back to the Revolutionary War. Mm. And so the bottles underneath the, the house, mm-hmm. I found those as a kid when I was in there. And like, if you live in a place like Fredericksburg, if you have a trowel and you dig like two inches into the ground, you're going to find like old bullets and things like that. It's really kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But I found, you know, those multicolored bottles and things like that. But also in the moving part of it, the thing that I really got absurd joy out of was how uh, many Sasuke are are inside the desk part in the back of the truck (laughs) driving and they had their own little space it's their own little kind of fort home type of thing isn't this cool we're in the back of the truck and i could just totally see myself like going yeah Mm -hmm. right in the back oh yeah it's so cool and it'll be able to stick my head out and stuff like that so it was just it was just fun kind of like reliving those kind of memories you know like when i would move you find those little fun little spaces and then going into a new space then and that was the other part of it is that when the movie got to them actually moving in and they took a long time moving in in yeah i remember had those memories of moving into a new house and like just Mm. running around going where does this door go where does this go where does that go did i hear something you know all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff and just being a little explored it was just it was just nice yeah that's cool yeah John? Well, the truck the truck made me think of the little three wheels. When you overburden them, yeah. all, they <laughs> tend to do things like fall over on uneven <laughs> ground. And so, I saw I saw this. Oh, geez, I think I rented it at Blockbuster. Okay, so that's yeah, that's been a while. And then saw it again. <laughs> actually, watched it again on a streaming service. Mm. Um, you know, once the digital age came. The amazing digital age <clears throat> and sort of you know it's just entertainment and nostalgia kind of thing because i think i watched um i watched ponyo and then i started mm. going and watching other things it's like a spirited away uh, and mm-hmm. totoro and like sort of just you know miyazaki kind of day mm. um and it's now the third time through mm. and i it didn't really occur to me at first it's like you know i've seen stuff about the little three-wheel post-war vehicles they mm. ran on like a you know like a 400 cc engine so it was mm-hmm. like it didn't require yeah. building it like a car that the technology was available and the materials extant to be able to do this but mm-hmm. sedans and bigger vehicles were a little more difficult to come by yeah so i'm looking at this i'm like well this is really putting me in the place it is heavily overburdened above and they <laughs> if this thing rolls into that rice patty those two are never getting out of it <laughs> Like not even a chance. It's gonna go down like the Titanic. Mm-hmm. But um, it really did put you in in a place and way that mm. I watching it now one more time. It really is. It is uh, the house has a distinct feeling as oh, like yeah. a, a, a of of a pre war Western styled home. Yeah, and that. The sensation is that, you know what I mean, as the as what occurred, you know, prior to the 1950s, mm. that the house, nobody came back to it. That it's just, mm. that was either something had happened or it was passe style or, so, but, you know, mm-hmm. go ahead. So one of the things that's actually been kind of explained about that is that, um, and it's the interesting thing about the house, it is a combination, uh, it, it is a Japanese style house with a Western addition on the uh, uh, on the end of it and the implication for the seven again i'm not sure exactly how much of this has been revealed what people understand is that uh, basically somebody got sick and they built this sort of sunroom for them to live in Ooh. as just kind of a you know a, a, a place for them and then they passed away and then everyone moved on you know and moved out uh which is why it's been abandoned for so long and and, wow. and again that's kind of the 
probably just kind of like something that Miyazaki wrote one day as backstory. And okay, well, we're going to work that in. Right. Uh, not really well with the plot. But like you said, and it, it, it does create this very interesting sort of vibe to it. Well, as you go forward through it, you see mm -hmm. things like telephone usage. Yeah. Electrical access. Mm -hmm. That things are very evidently not modern. They're not 1988. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not, no. You know, they're not anywhere within like the the latter half of the mm -hmm. of the 20th century. They're very evidently mm -hmm. still kind of that midway point. Mm -hmm. They have a water you know? pump. Yeah, and they have to yeah, prime, prime the pump. The pump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes you wonder how the toilet works. Yeah. Because at mm -hmm. one point they may open something and goes toilet. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have a toilet, mm -hmm. which I would imagine would probably be one of those raised tanks with the long... Uh, oh, no. I, I, oh, I, or do you I, think I, it's I, a pit toilet? I think it's a pit toilet, probably. Yeah. Oi. Oi. Um, but, uh, by the way, I thought the father was brave when he went when they first moved in, and they they thought they saw something in, in the ba in the bathing room, and they were going to look into the bathing yeah room. yeah because you know what would happen to us is that we like go uh uh oh oh oh, 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 oh. yeah or but, rabbit you know, raccoon would leap out or something yeah a dead yeah. a dead <laughs> tanuki <laughs> oh, right yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, it must have drowned like 20 years ago. It's mostly bones. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you have wooden coverings on your tubs, by the way. It's yeah. one of the things. Keep children um, and animals out. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, that's what, so I remember watching this the first time. I've watched it a few times, kind of like you guys. And um, what I found so interesting about the movie is, you know, you see them coming in. You, came, you see them starting to explore the place. I remember thinking, okay, so when does the bad guy show up? Like, we're spending a lot of time establishing this house, and then what does Miyazaki do? Um, uh, very quickly, he kind of starts establishing the, the rules of the universe by having them open the door to the kitchen um, and having all these little things move out of the way. And I love how they animate that, where, like, it's, you know, the implication is cockroaches, but that those aren't cockroaches. Like, no. Mm. No. Cookie um, Mori don't have fluff. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> at least Western Cookie Mori mm. don't have fluff. Yeah, Japanese might now, be cuddly. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> One of now, these when days. When you saw them. Yeah. When you saw them, and but with the eyes. Mm -hmm. yes. Did you guys get a sense of Hanna Barbera? Very cartoon. Scared it away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Very cartoon. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was. But, it was very so surprising. Was interesting. Totally. But, yeah, and and I don't remember them being that crisp when when you mm. see them with mm -hmm. eyes. Yeah, yeah, and that's the other part of it. And mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, okay, that's yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, no, they're they're, they're very fuzzy. Um, and then and again, I, I love how I love the character work in this film because you see, and again, in any other film, what would the father have done when his daughter said, "We just saw a bunch of, you know, soot creatures scurrying away." Um, you know, what he says indeed is, oh, liquor. come on. exactly. Um, he goes, <laughs> oh, sure, must be. Okay. And then just keeps moving on. You know, he doesn't shame. He doesn't say that can't possibly be true. He just acknowledges that that's what they think is there and just kind of moves on with it. Um, and it's also emblematic of the fact that they are moving out to the country where you have stories of, you know, the kappa playing down by the pool Right. And all that kind of stuff. So you, you are going to get a lot of that in general anyway. Um, well, I was going to say, too, you know, mid-century, mm -hmm. you still have, like, Obachan, like, Granny. Oh, yeah. She, arguably, she grew up in this little rural, isolated village. Mm -hmm. There's a good solid chance that she has the mythology deeply ingrained in her. Oh, yeah. And that, yeah. Yeah, she in, was... In this section of the world... Yeah. Co little crazy soot creatures? Sure. That's that's just par for the course. That's the well, way things are in this little she, village. She reminded me, and I wish I had a copy of it, of um, Shigeru Mizuki's mm -hmm. Nonomba. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She and, mm -hmm. and, you know, just kind of short, prone, wide eyes, wide face. Yeah. Kind of a thing. The big and mole. with that, <laughs> right? The big mole. The, the, it's like you almost have to have it. 
and clearly there's some Shinto Buddhist training there. You know, you see it later on in the, in the movie as like particularly yeah, the, the sandals, which freaked me out. And, <laughs> um, and, uh, but, uh, but uh, it, it was like, oh, there you I, go. I saw her and I was like, oh, that's none about it. Yep. Yep. That's mm -hmm. her. Yeah. And so she, you know, like people like her actually had a role in society. They, they mm -hmm. helped, you know, it's how she was really helpful with the kids oh, and yeah. helping them clean up and things like that. Um, people like that were, were actually attached to either a Shinto priest or a Buddha, Buddhist priest and they were helpful. And then they on the side would like work as, you know, um, grandmothers to mm -hmm. other people people's kids to help watch over them mm -hmm. over you know and to you know a little bit of pay maybe some food you know shelter whatever right mm -hmm. so this really reminded her of the you know reminded me of of the the nonamba where she's just nothing but kindness nothing mm -hmm. but wisdom and like the father yes you did see that i'm very happy that you saw that and she mm -hmm. she's happy about it yeah um, and you know, we know in the film, you know, she, she lives with Kanta, right? Like she is his, you know, grandma. grandma. Yeah. So it's, it's not like she is just some random woman. She is a neighbor, but she is also taking out her time to come over. In fact, she says, as you mentioned, you know, she, she says, um, oh, I would have come over and cleaned up before you got here. If I'd known you'd be, be here today. So you're absolutely right. Very helpful. Very much that, that local expert, local helper. Um, which she's out, you know, she's like 80 some odd years old. She's out planting yeah. rice and she would have come over <laughs> earlier to clean their place up. Mm -hmm. Let the young folks clean things. Please. Exactly. Yeah. I, I you, know, deserve, right? you deserve a little bit of a rest. <laughs> mm -hmm. You've been through World War One and World War Two, And here we are today. Jeez, mm -hmm. lady, sit down. Exactly. Yes. Break. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, so, yeah. So, and, and, but again, this is very much establishing what this society is like, right? It is neighbors helping each other. It is very connected. Um, uh, it's very much the sort of traditional Japanese uh, rural values, if you will. Um, uh, and then you get, and I, I, I do think this is sort of Miyazaki saying some things uh, and kind of communicating to his audience because we get this this long scene, well, a very, very long scene, of um, Satsuki stoking the fireplace. Um, and at first you see, you see the, the father chopping vegetables and so forth. Um, and then she goes out and, and gets the, um, the wood in one of my favorite scenes, cause it's just this completely quiet sequence of her outside and the wind just blows through and blows the sticks away. And again, you know, there's no bad guy, there's nothing's going on, but it hints as to the themes of the movie. Um, but again, what it's. You know, again, what I think Miyazaki is kind of planting here is that why you need a fire? Because that's how you heat things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like this isn't, you don't just flick a switch. Like this is all part of what you do things. And we see them take the bath later because they have hot water, because they sat at a fire. Right. Um, it's all there. Which um, are very interesting choices for this in keeping it a technology level, because you see there, there's a ceiling mm -hmm. lamp. There is electricity. Mm -hmm. We know they have phones, and we learned through yep. this. But you never once see any jet aircraft in the air flying mm, over anywhere. True. Mm -hmm. You don't see, like, you know, any higher technology kind of stuff appearing. Mm -hmm. It's all kept very minimal yeah, and very sort of unobtrusive. Mm -hmm. Like the bus could have dropped out of like 1920. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's no real way to peg that mm -hmm. as a 1950s bus or a 60s, but mm -hmm. you know by the time you hit the 80s, it wasn't that bus. Right. You know what I mean? So it's Absolutely. like this is pur purposely couched in a time where it's got a high nostalgia and low technology. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and yet safely far enough away from the war – that's no longer a factor in any of the, you know, you're not right. seeing any of that. Um, totally. Um, uh, and so, you know, and again, you're like, when does the bad guy show up? Because um, they all get on a bicycle and, and go away. And here's where you start to see some of the more serious elements of the film where they go to see, you know, their parents. Or their, their mother, rather. Um, and again, yeah, I just... Very interesting hospital. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Clearly a, you know, a... A, a a space that is now being used as a hospital. Yeah. You know, not built for purpose. Um, 
Because it and, looks like a summer camp. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and, it's really, you know, it's nicely in the woods. It's pretty. And, and, and I suspect this is not a hospital. It's more of a, like, a recovery resort kind of an area kind of a thing. Right. Right. <clears throat> right. Um, there for tuberculosis recovery, where you just rest and get your get yourself right. healed. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I was just going to say that reminds me of what we have here on the eastern shore up up here in Maryland. Um, um, Baltimore, yes, that is a disease. Uh, yeah, place. Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, oh no, over on the other side of the bridge, uh, Claiborne. Um, you know, like one of the big things over Claiborne was they actually brought kids with TB from Baltimore okay. from, oh. over there because it was you know just clean. Inner mm-hmm. air it was just a nicer calmer environment mm-hmm. and, you know for kids they heal like that so like when we finally see the mom in the hospital once we finally get that information we finally go there um that's kind of what looked look, look like to me i was just like going, oh god she's got cancer or something or right. you know, something like that but then when i saw that you know it definitely looked repurposed like that wasn't the original intent it yeah. looked like something else but you know mm-hmm. Uh, I was just like, oh, okay, so she probably had TB or or there's some type of consumption, congestion, right. whatever. Mm-hmm. And again, I think it's the smart thing of using this sort of location is that it tells the audience, okay, she has a disease, but it's not like, is she going to die tomorrow? Right. right. Like it's, it's a it's a broader right. thing. Um, and it's She's also not on a respirator in a right, yeah. concrete <laughs> building <laughs> and you know Wait, filled thing. with tubes and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I also thought about it interesting. This is the first time we see Satsuki and May get into any sort of argument. Um, is in front of their mother, um, because finally, you know, they can kind, kind of, they can be sisters. They can be kids. You know, th- th- that sort of. We got to make sure everything is is fine. And also, obviously, they're you know they're not distracted by moving into a big house. Right. Um, but you do see that sort of shortness between the two of them. Um, uh, and I just, I just, you know, such a, such a beautifully domestic scene. Um, um, and it doesn't really do much other than just kind of tell us this backstory. And I love that yeah. again, another film, he would get a, the father would get a phone call right after they, they moved in from the hospital saying, you know, uh, you know, she's still sick or whatever. And, you know, giving us that in dialogue. Right. And instead, we we're shown it, and we get this whole scene, kind of experience it, understand the, the kids, you know, experience the fact that the kids aren't freaked out by this; they're not, you know, overtly worried by it. Um, so, really, I think um, uh, it's a very comforting scene in that way. Um, well, yeah, when you get the idea that they understand why they're actually there, usually, right. like you're mm-hmm. saying, you get a different way of being told that that's like suddenly the kids just oh my god mom is sick yeah they already know that mm-hmm. and they already know why they're there so yeah. there's no ambiguity there's no you know whatever and you know as brent's saying they've been living with this for a little while now so right. they mm-hmm. kind of know what's going on and they're living with it because their kids and they're adaptable i will say that i found it funny as as i was watching it you know the the, the little girls mimicking the older sister you know as they're yep. running around and the older sister said something, mm-hmm. the little girl says something. Next day is Christmas. I'm you know visiting my my niece and, and nephew who are very young. Um, you know, she's seven and he's like two. Mm. <laughs> and it's like I was like, wait a minute, am I rewatching the movie? Because <laughs> <laughs> my niece is running around going, Happy Christmas, happy Christmas, and the little brother's like running around, going, happy Christmas. <laughs> you know, just, I was just like, like okay, yeah, all right, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Yep, Miyazaki had kids. Like I'm sure this was yeah. very much from experience. Um, um, well, I like his work is with the with the father as a sort of grounding mm-hmm. element to this, mm-hmm. because there isn't even in having um, Satsuki call him mm-hmm. on the village phone. Yeah. Um, there isn't a sense of panic in any of this. So the mother's mm-hmm. not coming home. The mother's condition is mm-hmm. met with, I understand. Okay. Yeah. I'll call them later. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. this entire thing is just this. There's not a heightened sense of of dramatic, like, oh, is something terrible? It's yeah. this very measured step. It's like this very low hum kind of rhythm mm-hmm. where there's the things that are going on, the average daily life that's happening. And there are things that happen during that. 
mm-hmm. but none of them are a panic. Right. All of them are taken with measure and with consideration. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that's exactly right. You're exactly right. Because mm-hmm. when May responds to this, how does she respond? She doesn't panic. She's mm-hmm. disappointed. Yeah. And she's upset. Mm-hmm. Right. And you hear then that you understand the, the one of them says, okay, this has happened before. We know that this has happened before. Yeah. And May is, dis- she's a little kid. She's, mm-hmm. you know, disappointed. But what you don't see May doing going, oh my God, she's going to die. She's going to die. Right. And right. Mommy's going to die. Right. This, it's mm-hmm. more along the lines of it's not, well, she says it, it's not fair. Right. I want, yeah. You know, it's not fair. Mm-hmm. You know, we built ourselves up and again, she got sick. And, and again, I, I love how they, they set this up where you have the father, um, like you say, and just the framing of all this where you have Satsuki, you know, bundle of tension waiting on the phone. As soon as her father picks up, she starts, you know, rambling, whatever. And then when you see the father, it's from a distance, yep. right? You're seeing him through a window, you know, and you're not even seeing his full face. You're just getting that sense like, like, like he's on the other side of a telephone. And it is very much that child's experience of the child having all of these, you know, very strong emotions. And, the, you know, the parent is calm. Why are you calm? Like, you know, I accept, I'll accept that, but it's just such a, it, it, it heightens the strangeness of that reaction from a child's perspective. Um, so that when, you know, you do get that, that shift and, and the kids do start getting really frustrated, you see where it's coming from. Like, you know, right. it, it is hard. Um, well, I mean, and so, too, any time, you know, if you've ever had to call a parent at their work uh, and you're yeah. excited, her yeah. father is on the other end of this at his <laughs> university department. Yep. And it's not like he can sit there and there's obviously a coworker who's right in front yeah, of him. Right. <laughs> right. So he's not going to. It, and I won't go so far as to say lose face, but he's not going to mm-hmm. lose his cool. Yeah. In front of other people, he's mm-hmm. going to be calm for her, mm-hmm. and he's going to be measured and controlled mm-hmm. because of the environment that he's in, and then he will deal with it in a timely manner, mm-hmm. in a in a fashion that is adult appropriate to where mm-hmm. he is, what's going on. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also just love the the character work here in the father how exactly like how common how measured he is but then how also like in that that scene where they wake up the next morning and he wakes up and he goes in for, to, to the water and Satsuki's already making lunch and he goes oh i'm sorry i completely forgot and it's like ah there's your hint audience you know this yeah. is this is not the most self-aware father in the, in the world um as as we will see later Typical academic. Head yeah, exactly. clouds, no <laughs> yeah. idea what's going on. Uh, that ivory tower, he's so far off yeah, it. Completely. Um, yeah, and yeah, indeed. I was half expecting the scene of like the, the grandmother coming in going, oh, where's May? Who? What? Right. What well, don't I have a kind kid? of get that? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I mean, I'm working on this, working on this. Yeah, honey, you play outside. Mm-hmm. Working on this. Oh, where'd she go? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, which allows her to uh, uh, to go out and meet Totoro for the first time. Um, and this is where we get that, that, uh, that scene, Steve, and I'm, I'm totally with you there, that sense of discovery of, of underneath yeah. the stairs and uh, underneath the, the foundation of the house and the cans and the, the Ramune bottle down there, yep. um, which is yeah. great. Um, um, which uh, is a good she... thing they don't have wolverines in Japan because this yeah. is the <laughs> end of May. <laughs> hey, what's underneath there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, My face. Good work, Dad. <laughs> really kept a kept a lid on that whole thing. <laughs> um and so then she goes, you know, down the rabbit hole into Wonderland, yeah. basically. Um, and with no questions. No yeah. there is a funky thing that's like kind of a rabbit with like two mm-hmm. feet. Okay, I can understand from May's perspective, maybe this is just a, you know, it's an animal. It's like mm-hmm. some kind of bunny or something she doesn't understand. The tiny Totoro is carrying a little sack. Yep. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> and May has no questions about it. No. Nope. Complete acceptance and mm-hmm. just, hey, this is cool. Off we go. Yep. And like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, you know, mind of a child, right? Like, that's yeah. just. The way that kind of works often. Um, 
it is kind of amazing. Um, but yeah, um, one second. There we go. Um, cool. Let me get that back in. Um, slight technical difficulties, as usual. Trauma. Um, this was a Trauma Films release, technically. Oh, uh, by, by Fox. Um, so yeah, so she, she leaves. She, uh, she leaves behind the, uh, the, uh, the hat. Um, we also get one of our, no, not the first one, a, a very early Miyazaki trip. Um, very often, Miyazaki's characters will stumble in a scene in which they are going about something that is sort of questionable. Um, if they're running away or they're you know, exploring someplace they shouldn't go, they will stumble. And sure enough, you know, May stumbles as she's going off in search of, of, of nowhere. Um, uh, whereupon she finds herself in the beautiful Sylvan Glade um, amidst Jomon pottery um, and the, the giant Totoro. Um, uh, and so we get this... So I had the, fortunate, the fortune to watch... Totoro with a family, including young children, um, this year, um, uh, earlier in the year. And it was fascinating watching different ages of people respond to this scene. Um, because the parents were like, no, no, you do not interact with the giant fur thing, the giant fur creature, <laughs> you know, you go away. Exactly. Um, and the kids like were, were... Jay said in the chat, Hugging a black bear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kids, don't hug bears. Just stay away from the bear. Mm -hmm. um, but the the kids were kind of a, they were actually kind of a, a mix. Interestingly enough, like some of them thought it was cool. Some of them was like, "Yeah, go for it." Um, others were just kind of like, "How's this gonna work out?" Um, and I think it's kind of <laughs> kind of having most of the audience is, is worrying at that moment. Um, and I think that is also kind of pushed by Miyazaki and how Totoro reacts to this. Is this giant mouth opening? Um, <laughs> they can clearly swallow a small child. Um, <laughs> but very quickly, you, you realize you, it is just this thing. Did you notice well, you the know, dentition he has, that he, yeah. uh, he oh, used yeah. for Totoro? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is not only, you know, human-esque in the dentition, mm -hmm. but there's nothing sharp. Yes. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's not like Totoro's open his mouth and there's huge canines and just, mm -hmm. you know, slavering jaw of teeth there going mm -hmm. on and freaking out about it. It's a very benign dental setup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not that anybody wants to get bitten by like a human yes. set of teeth, but, you know, but still. Clearly no. a plant no. eater. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And someone who looks like he's sleeping off a all nighter session of tension <laughs> in back. Exactly. <laughs> he's just, he's just uh, yeah, and he does like go right back to sleep. Um, <laughs> um, and so we, we we come back and again you're kind of waiting for okay where's the where's the big drama? Uh, no, like Suzuki finds May instantaneously um, there on the ground. Suzuki's a little worried, and again I, I love the reaction here that Suzuki is like she's worried throughout this entire thing. She sees May, she goes over, she's like, oh my god. May, May, are you all right? May wakes up, and then Satsuki gets angry. You know, a little bit, but what are you doing here? How did this isn't... Why you are you know? sleeping outside? Mm, yes, this is not our property. <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah, like... um, uh, and... You darn kids. <laughs> and then the father comes in, um, in his, his classic way. Um, and, um, again, totally believes uh, uh, May, despite the, the wonderful sort of uh, uh, Scooby-Doo logic of the, uh, the the exploration there. Yeah. Uh, you just kind of go in, come back out, and wait, wait, we <laughs> made a circle. Well, um, and I love the way that it's animated in, in the fashion that the physicality of her confusion mm -hmm. is is a, is primarily important. She's making confused noises. Yeah. But just just the physicality of going in and pops out like, mm -hmm. uh, whoosh, yep. pops out. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. Yep. It's conveyed so well. Mm -hmm. Perfectly. Um, uh, whereupon they do what you should do in such situations. 
So, uh, his, uh, you know, her father says, you know, assuming this is true, you were clearly met by, like, some forest spirit, like some supernatural entity. We do not just ignore this. We go to the local shrine. We, you know, make our ablutions and we make sure everything's cool. So he immediately takes them up there. And this is like a, a, a classic sort of Japanese thing, uh, okay. you know, traditionally. Um, if you, make an, you have an encounter with a kami, you go to the shrine and you, you, you do your thing. And sure enough, there's this massive, ridiculously massive tree. Um, with camphor tree. The, the, the camphor tree, uh, which is there's also a camphor tree in Grave of the Fireflies, but I don't want to go there. Um, <laughs> next to this sort of old, run-down shrine building. Um, um, whereupon, and, and again, like there's no, there's no shrine maiden here. Like this is not attended. Um, but they well, still. It's interesting because I kind of expected like the first time I watched the film, mm -hmm. and I saw them get to that point. Mm. I was fully expecting them like, oh, okay, here comes the, we we got to go, you know, apologize for running across the forest spirit. Now there's the cleaning montage where they're gonna fix the uh, shrine up and it's gonna be all this stuff. Oh, they to... <laughs> nope. nope. They just that, it's <laughs> like, yeah, here's an old broken down old shrine. Let's go over to the tree. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, it's mm -hmm. unexpected. Okay. Yep. Um. Yeah. They had not much to do except do a little prayer. You know. Yeah. Do the thing, and then then head back out. Um, this one's a rotten egg. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love that. Um, you also get one of my favorite things here, um, which we'll, we'll come back to if we have time. Um, one of my favorite translation problems comes up in this scene where she's running back to her mother. Um, and he comes later in a, in a later uh, 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 scene, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Um and then uh, Suzuki goes to school because she is a kid and there's a thing she has to do. And again, I'm watching this the first time thinking, so where's the villain? Like, where's the bad guy? Where's the tension? Where's the conflict? Um, like, I was loving it. Don't get me wrong. But I was like, what, what is this movie? How, how are they structuring this to make this work? Um, this is the first slice of life school <laughs> comedy yeah. kind of thing. And it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. The entire genre. Awesome. Mm -hmm. At a high bar, um, but again, we get this this thing that kind of layers. Uh, it, it's it's more of a plot thing where now we're getting May's perspective without having May tell it to us. She doesn't like being alone. She doesn't like being somewhere else. She doesn't like being separated from Satsuki, and she's prone prone to kind of tam uh, tantrums. I love how, and I think I'll be, I'll be able to get it um, get it here um, when you you see Granny there. Um, and she's talking about May. Um, we cut to this uh, this little shot um, of May's face. I don't know if I'll be able to get to it. Um, and you can see that um, uh, yeah, uh, she's been crying, right? Yeah. And the tears are dried. Yeah. And she's just mm, over yeah, it. There. Yeah. Um, and it's just a, a great way of of. Getting that across without having to have you know twenty lines of dialogue to explain it, um, and she's just not going anywhere, so she gets to to go to school with Satsuki. Um, and before anyone asked, like this is back at a time yeah, there were no kindergartens, there was no preschool, yeah. like that's just this is not available. Right. Um, yeah, mid mid century, yeah. one room schoolhouse in a yeah. little village kind of thing. Mm. I very you know it's and it's funny. It made me think a lot of non non Biori. Ah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like the old mm. schoolhouse, everybody mm -hmm. together. Now, mind you, non non Bury is you know a a twenty first century sure. series, mm -hmm. but it's really kind of a funky look. That's like, wow, did you guys watch Totoro as a kid? <laughs> and then <laughs> probably had this nostalgic <laughs> thing and be like, let's mm -hmm. do this thing where it's a quiet village sure, life yeah. and the daily experience that they have because mm -hmm. Totoro did it. Like, yeah, absolutely. Well, what I also find interesting is, um, um, you know, in, sort of in contrast to Nanan Biori, you, know, you notice how close their desks are. <laughs> you know, they're basically doubled yeah. up. Because uh, yep. um, it's the baby boom, you know, basically. Uh, you know, there's all these kids, we have you know, a lot of capacity. Um, by the way, in case anyone's wondering, uh, in case you wondered why um, every school in Japan is a mid-20th century concrete building, it's because they built like 
a Man. thousand of these <laughs> right in this time because they had to. Um, and again, just getting across with little bits of, of history in it, I think. Um, well, as I say, uh, you figure post-war you had the return of servicemen and and mm -hmm. and people that literally went out to colonize places like Formosa yeah. and Absolutely. coastal China. Mm -hmm. So you had yeah. from the diaspora, you had an exodus from their respective colonial interests, <laughs> cramming them back into Japan. The so empire suddenly got all, real small. Yeah, and so <laughs> but, you get a lot of people. You get you know the good news is you you get improving lifestyle and, and improving mm -hmm. access to food as you get 10 years down the line after the war, yeah. which then subsequently, like everywhere else in the world, 10 years after the war, everybody starts having kids. Like, <laughs> just super crazy, like, wow, we're not, nobody's dying. Cool, let's go have kids. This will be awesome. Let's enjoy life. Yeah, let's Great. live a little. Yeah. yeah. But, and also, that was also why you see so many of the, those kind of just structures is, is that that's how japan recovered basically mm. economically was through construction yeah and so it, it was just <clears throat> and you know once they understood that they had the materials at hand that they didn't have to mm -hmm. you know sell their souls for paper or anything anymore. <laughs> yeah. they, they could just you know literally just go ahead and build these things to how like, like you know you know, saying how's these people that are coming back in and then mm -hmm. going hey we can enjoy life and let's have kids and so that may be the scene where they're the, all those kids. I, it, you know, I never really thought about that before, but it did seem crowded. Now that you guys are mentioning it, it, it does seem crowded in that scene, um, especially the cute scene where where um, Kunta is like looking at Sasuke, and you kind of go, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then the teacher yeah. comes up and whap, you know, yeah, and, 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 <laughs> that's awesome. And she smiled, but she's smiling. She knows what's going yeah. on because how can she not notice? But really, it, there is all those kids in there, and they really mm -hmm. aren't crammed in there. I never really thought about it. But you don't really see yeah. too many other kids other than Kanta. Yeah. You don't see, you see Obachan, she's out like planting mm -hmm. rice. You don't really see in the village life all these hordes of children. Mm -hmm. You know, because, not focused on that. Yep, yeah, right. And partly because it is a Satoyama, like everyone has their farms to take care right. of. So they're pretty spread out. Uh, there's also another interesting thing that I think people don't appreciate is that, like, you know, they're not farmers, right? Like he has a university job, so this is a right. this is a retreat basically. They 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 are buying a nice house out in the country, um, so they're not really interacting that much right. with the people in the in the town. Uh, you're absolutely right. Which Satsuki, um, you know, it's fun that she meets on. She makes a friend. Yeah, but like when she's getting ready to go to school, and like the right, girl yeah. comes up, she's like. Ah! <laughs> and she's like, oh no, eats quick and runs out of the house. And it's like, yeah, that's, you know, children will do that. They mm -hmm. glom together. Yep. Her father's reaction, you made a friend already? Like, yeah. School hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Dang. You know? But yeah, absolutely. Um, um, whereupon the rain begins. Um, rain and rain. you start, and again, we, or we, we, we continue with this interesting sort of. Um, relationship with with shinto uh they talk in the little shrine there uh out of the rain uh and it's this wonderful little moment where like i i've, I've watched this with people where they were like is that is that allowed like would would the kids even do that uh because it's a holy place right and it's like well yeah because it's it's a holy place but it's not a holy place in the sense of like the tabernacle Right. right. You, you know, you're not going to get struck down right. by God for standing here. Um, and they do offer thanks for sharing the shelter. Absolutely. So it's not mm -hmm. like it's done in a sort of sacrilegious way. Be like, out of the way, Jizo. <laughs> <laughs> I need that bib. I'm going to put that on me. Oh, I'm going to stand here now. Mm -hmm. Like, no. And they're not eating I, any of the I, offerings. I, you know I, what I mean? They're, they're being respectful in, their, yeah. in what they're right. doing. Right. Absolutely. I, I love that that particular scene where she just says, "Hey, we're gonna stay here for a little bit if you do, mm -hmm. if you don't mind." I was just like, "Wow, that's you know that's just something you don't see, and that's yeah. like you guys are saying is a very Shinto thing, particularly with you know the previously you know staying in front of the the large tree with the, with the mm -hmm. uh, rope around it and giving a prayer to the the forest, which kind of lends me to think that maybe the father is just you know." Maybe it's not, he's not being just, 
you know, understanding with the kids and saying, okay, nice. Idea. Yeah, cool. Totoro. Yeah, whatever. Maybe he doesn't believe in Totoro, but he, maybe he does believe in the Shinto, which is right. The, 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 the force is looking after, after my daughter. So why I should mm-hmm. give thanks. Right. You know, you have these Jesus everywhere where you, that's kind of the purpose of them where, you know, they can duck out of the rain and go, I hope you don't mind. And mm-hmm. of course the Jesus, if it has a spirit, it didn't could speak. We're probably going, well, that's kind of why I'm here. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm here to protect you. And I'm mm-hmm. doing my job. Yeah, that's exactly. yep. that, that's my job. Right. Exactly. You know, um, so I, that's, that's one of the big things that I've always gotten out of Totoro was that it was mm-hmm. it's a very strong Shinto feel mm-hmm. to it. Drive, a definite vibe without, without having to like, well, I love an intention. Moyo, it does feel a little bit like, Hey, there's some shit that there's some Shinto references here. We're gonna beat you over the head with. Yeah. Oh, and you haven't even read the novels. The novels are worse. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, yeah. And what uh, I meant to mention too, the hmm. camphor tree. Yeah. Uh, they are referred to as kusunoki. Hmm. Uh, they can grow upwards of thirty meters high, and it's the it's believed that they house. Um, spirits in the tree itself so that's uh, uh, interesting so okay. you know when i looked mm-hmm. that up i'm like well of course that makes total sense because <laughs> there's totoro <laughs> right <laughs> he lives in the roots of the camphor tree the camphor tree is supposed to house like spirits oh, God, there there are. Mm-hmm. totally it's a nice shinto thing all the way back around absolutely um and then of course kanta you know does the thing um you know and it, it uh, protects Satsuki and May. I love Satsuki's reaction there of just, uh, uh, yeah. uh, what? <laughs> like, I don't even know what to do here. Sakata <laughs> uh, just leaves and runs. Um, we, we, and again, yeah, speaking, you know, as a kid, that totally would have been me, you know, just <laughs> here, you know. <laughs> I'm trying uh, to be nice and I don't know how. Here, just yeah. <laughs> Kanda's not long on words. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's yeah. a sailor's type. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I do like his sailor's cap, though. It's quite, yeah. it's quite, uh, quite stylish. Mm, absolutely. Um, um, so, yeah, so Satsuki you know, brings back. We get this fairly long scene, actually, with Satsuki and May bringing the, the umbrella back and getting a sense of, you know, Kanta's home life and so forth. Um, uh, and then they go out, and we're getting into the scene. Um, and again, you get the same similar kind of thing. There's, um, I love this little moment where May goes uh, over to that little shrine next to the uh, the bus stop, and it's kind of creepy. Um, Is that you know, in Inari, just... Inari shrine? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Um, and I'll see if I can get a little bit of that. Fox yeah, there's... shrine. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, you know, again, kind of for a kid, it is kind of creepy. It's very dark. Um, there's no real obvious connection to like what this is and you know why it's here and all that kind of stuff it's just this you know fox statue out there and somebody's probably told her at some point but it's in one ear not the other um and it's it, it's what's lovely about this movie and it's it's sort of subtlety is that it, it's not like shinto yeah right um <laughs> right. you know shinto is just kind of part of life and right. it's just one of those things um uh, on the side well, it's also treated in – you could easily – you're looking for a villain. You could right. easily have had May look around that tree and made it into, oh, this spooky kind of nature mm-hmm. religion ah, and have her run. But no. Yep. Yep. She sees it. Mm-hmm. She acknowledges it, internalizes mm-hmm. it. It doesn't scare her. It is mm-hmm. not scary nature religion. Yeah. It's, just, it's just there. Mm-hmm. And then she moves on. And it's like yeah. – cool exactly you know um and she just kind of does the thing whoops keep missing and, keep missing and then there was a road cone and there's a road cone. <laughs> no um not the road cone yeah um and so we come to the, you know, the scene um so whenever miyazaki makes a movie he does a lot of watercolor paintings and eventually he'll come up with, with one watercolor painting that is that kind of for him sums up the tone of the film uh wow. it's kind of his his statement of the film if you will and his for Totoro was this image of the Totoro standing in the rain next to this um, bus stop with a little girl in an umbrella. A single girl. Uh, and you may have seen that image uh, around. It's, 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 
have been um, circulated here and there. Um, originally, he was just going to be one girl. Um, and then partway through production, or partway through planning it out, um, he realized there was no way of having a girl who was simultaneously playing around and finding Totoro, um, but also being responsible, uh, and also the kind of filling these roles, you kind of had to split it out, yeah. um, which made it kind of more complicated. Um, and we get this long scene with some lovely Joe Hisaishi music behind here with basically no dialogue. Uh, just Satsuki observing Totoro, Totoro observing Satsuki. Um, she realizes that he's getting wet, and so she offers him the umbrella, um, uh, which whereupon he gets very excited <laughs> by the sound of the, the rain. I, I love his leaf. That, yeah, like, covers like one one hundredth yeah, of his one mass. One. <laughs> like you could which, have grabbed like a whole branch and held it over your head and like get one leaf. Which, in fairness, is a classic, as as we both know, a classic a transformation thing, right? Yeah. So the right. you know the tanuki would put that on to transform. Yeah. So the hint is that he's not been visible to this point. Now he is, he is, uh, he's visible. Or he's otherwise trying to hide his identity. Right. Um, but again, I, I love how this gets across. You know, before, all we've really seen of Totoro is him asleep, waking up briefly. Yeah. So we don't really know his personality. Right. Here, he's just, he's, he's a salaryman waiting for his boss, basically. Just, well, you know. Yeah. Um, but then he hears this sound, this really neat sound on the umbrella. And he, he wants to replicate it. So it does that wonderful yeah. boom, which boom. everyone boom. laughs at uh, whenever they see it. Um, causes all the rain. Uh, and which leads us in to the cat bus. Yes, it does. Um, who well, I also love the, the sounds that he gets from yeah. the umbrella. <laughs> how he just shivers the entire yeah. body <laughs> shiver that he <sighs> has. That's like that was cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, and you, the cat bus. Let's talk about the cat bus here for a second. Um, with its rat lights. <laughs> with its rat lights, it's oh. it's a weird thing. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> um, let's see if we can get a little bit of it. No, it just yeah. Sorry, my my uh, player keeps uh, freezing up here. Um, so what's interesting to me about the cat bus is that there are um, when you look at the the creatures in Totoro. Um, it's easy to think of them initially as being yokai, right? Um, but they're not quite yokai. The, um, the soot sprites are more like, um, um, and I forget the name of them, but there, there is a term for these, uh, these creatures. Um, House spirits? The, yeah, the, the um, they are like variations of yokai that um, spontaneously generate around like old discarded things. Um, so you know, if, if humans leave piles of garbage, yokai will, will sort of gather there. There are particular kind of yokai that are kind of um, they kind of grow out of a response of human carelessness, um, and the sit sprites are clearly kind of based off of that. Um, the cat bus, in contrast, um, is more of a traditional yokai, right? It is a, it is like an existing creature, um, but with or it's like an existing creature and you know a human thing, frankly, yeah. mashed together. Um, whereas Totoro is kind of a kami, right? K M I, not like communist, uh, you know. <laughs> He, uh, well, maybe he's a communist, I don't know. He's like um, Joseph Stalin. What? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> okay, now we have to start that whole, you know, that whole fan theory. You know, wow. make some videos about that. Totally um, as Joseph Stalin. Yeah. <laughs> all, um, it's all a metaphor for the October Revolution. Um, wow. So. <laughs> so all the um, student riots wrapped mm -hmm. into him being, never mind. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so you get, again, you get kind of this interesting interaction between all the different elements of um, Japanese traditionalist religion and, and, and such, and folklore, more, more accurately, um, where Totoro doesn't transform, you know, he, he's not really trying to hide himself, he just kind of goes about his business, because he is just this ancient creature that is just there. 
Um, he, he was not, you know, formed of something else. He is not in a long line of something else. He is just this, this creature. Um, um, and, but, he, but he's able to interact with the yokai, kind of control them and so forth. Uh, and you get that this is this wonderful sense of, again, we've, we've encountered something strange, something unexplainable, something completely outside of the, the norm. Um, and that's just what happens, right? There's no moral, there's no lesson. That just happens. Um, well, it's interesting, too, that you when you have May look around at the fox shrine, mm -hmm. that's a kitsune. That's a fox. Yep. Totoro is most evidently not a fox. No. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what Totoro is, but you don't know what Totoro is. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, and that's right. the nice part that, that sort of Miyazaki's playing with is like, there is a richness to the yokai uh, mm -hmm. world. Yeah. Where you have like the Fox's Wedding book that's on mm -hmm. Kickstarter and they keep advertising, where you've got a lot of very, you know, sort of traditional veined kind of yokai. And then you've got Miyazaki who, who is coming up with conceptual yokai, but divorcing it from having a specific thing. It doesn't just grow trees. It doesn't just do this. It doesn't do. Totoro is free to do anything across the landscape within his own agency. It's mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Oh, is that the is that the fox wedding? Um, this this is a a prior version. book of illustrations by the same person, I believe. Ooh. Um, nice. Uh, let me see if I can get a better image. Cause it, it's another sort of night parade of a thousand. Boy, these are. You forget how creepy these are. But yeah, all the sort of traditional. Yeah. Yokai type That's creatures. Cool. Um, food dogs. Uh, food dogs. Um, and again, I'm sure there is a. If there's a picture of Totoro in there, I'm gonna fall out of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> and Totoro, what? Yeah. Totoro he... exists in reality. <laughs> well. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then Yuki Oda and so forth in here. Um, but yeah, yeah like you said, the very traditional kind of, right. you know, you know they are, but they're the sort of variations on known things, right. but Totoro is this thing. And to that point, um, uh, well, we'll get to that later. There is a whole backstory as to what Totoro is that Miyazaki eventually revealed, um, but not as relevant to what we're talking about right here. Um... And so um, you move on from there to, to them planting the seeds and the growth of, of that, which is kind of odd because, again, this doesn't really go anywhere in the sense of this is basically just a scene of them interacting with Totoro, having this great flying scene. It honestly feels like, like Miyazaki was like, I need a flying scene in my movie. Here's the justification for that. So we're going to have our flying scene in, in, in a movie. And it's iconic. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um, but it also is kind of setting up the fact that Totoro is not simply a, a creature that kind of walks around and does his thing. He also has agency. Right. Um, he also has powers, which will come to be important later on. Which I think it's interesting that they use a, a top. Yes. Because top tops are, you know, a popular child's toy. Mm -hmm. Um, and it really drives home when he gets the top out. It's like, it's like, okay. So for this this mystical creature, he's got a sense of like fun, of childlike yes. fun. Absolutely. You know that he's zipping around on this thing with his umbrella, and it's just it's, it's this great adventure. Mm -hmm. You know, and he waits for that May. You know, the little Totoro's pile on May yeah. is just like splat. <laughs> and Satsuki is just kind of looking like, uh, and he just waits. Mm -hmm. He's got nothing yeah. else that he has to do. He just mm -hmm. waits for her to pile on, and off they go. Like, yep. oh, I want to be there. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, nope, there they go. Um, no, you're absolutely right. You know, um, it's you know, what do we do now? And uh, waiting for Satsuki to, to react. Um, and off she goes, and off they fly. I love the look um, on her face. It's just yeah. unadulterated yeah, joy. Exactly, yeah. Childlike <laughs> wonder and joy. <laughs> we get to do this thing. It's fantastic. Um, and again, it, it, you, you think about how, like, the father has been reacting in this, in this whole time. Very measured, very calm. It's not that he has no emotions, but he doesn't do things like that because he's not, you know, seven years old, however old right. uh, Suzuki is. Yeah. 
Um, it's do like... you notice from time to time he kind of sees things out of his corner of his eyes? Mm -hmm. like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just and then little, he you know... dials it back into being in an adult mm -hmm. in mood, and uh... mm -hmm. yep. adults mm -hmm. miss out things. Ignores sure do. Ignores his children. Does <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. them play with a local god and fly <laughs> through the sky. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's all cool. Mm -hmm. I also love it. I don't know if this is intentional or not, but when they're playing their flutes or their ocarinas, their ocarina, and their, yeah, the exactly. ocarina of time. Um, <laughs> at the end of that, they play the, the notes. Essentially, arrange themselves into the theme song. Where the last few notes are do 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 do, and it's and it's not the final note, and I think that is essentially Hisaishi and Miyazaki inviting the audience to be the final member. Ah. you know, okay. uh, complete the song with us, right? Like be right. part of all this. It's it's great. Um, um, and then we hit at three, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my dear Totoro, um, because the telegram arrives. Um, and this is where the movie becomes a little less lighthearted. Um, because we get this gorgeous summer day. Yeah. Um, uh, and just Satsuki and Mei having their time. Um, and then, like, like you were saying, I, and I, I just love the, the buildup of this scene where they're just having their day. Kanta shows up, it's a telegram. For those who don't remember the way life was like back in the day, you know, something like this was expensive. It was hard to connect all the dots. Uh, it was like, you, have, you, know, you guys remember getting a collect call long distance. Yeah. You know, that, that was a big deal. Um, so you deal with that, and she gets this. And again, you don't expect a child to be reading this letter. So you just right. say, hey, there's a deal. Give me a call. It's a telegram. We're, we're brief. Suzuki freaks out. Um, and so they go to get the, get the phone. Um, and again, I love how they build this up. How May's trying to follow along. And she gets further and further behind. And the camera gets further and further away. Um, because you get the sense of, again, being this small child. The camera also gets lower and lower, you notice. Where we're now from May's perspective. Um, and we're getting the sense of, yeah, I mean, it's, it's this, all of these houses that all look basically alike. Um, you also notice that they are not going back to Kanta's house. Nope. Um, they're going to some, somebody who could afford to have a phone. The village phone. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just, it's interesting because all the rest of the, the movie, we're seeing the house the shrine hill, the camphor tree, the mm. rice paddies out, mm. a few other homes. And yeah. this is the first and only time we actually see other homes. There are hedges along here, streets. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's a little bit more Village. villagey. It's basically than... a suburb. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which also again, kind of reinforces how spread out it is. Where it's right. like, it takes a while to get here. Well, I also got a feeling from it that it was suburbanization as mm. uh, alienation. Uh, yeah. That you have may as the stand in for you know somebody who is experiencing this this suburban where everything looks the same yeah and you don't know which way the roads are going and you don't you know what i mean it's kind of an unfamiliar thing because everything's so structured mm -hmm. versus this farming area that they're in where things are put conveniently but still adjacent to their purpose yeah Mm -hmm. This is obviously these are just houses on plots mm -hmm. on on streets. So yep, mm -hmm. and it's interesting again, sort of comparing that to Suzuki and May's house, where they don't have a farm, nope. um, but it's like right next to th that. Um, yeah, there's no hedges, there's no borders that delineate mm -hmm. the space that is Totoro's space by the camphor tree, or their yep. space. It's mm -hmm. sort of you know the hedge. Yep. Uh, area with the little mm -hmm. tunnel is the portal between the two, but there's nothing like these hedges are mm -hmm. very distinctly walls. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Totally. Um, it's inter you're absolutely right. That, that's really interesting, actually. Um, uh, yeah, and and, uh, and as, as uh, uh, they mentioned in the chat, <laughs> you know, 
That's an old phone. Um, yes, it for is. 1955, that's a relatively old phone. Um, I'm not as up yeah. as to where Japan was in terms of telephonication at this point. Um, but still, you know, that's that's a good old rotary phone. Um, well, I mean, you figure the mid '50s. It's it's all copper line. Sure. You know what I mean? So literally, you're you're not you're you're not going to have the plug in like mm. we had in the, mm. in the 70s and 80s. You're going to have like the four prong connector kind of thing into a <laughs> into a socket with a copper line. Mm -hmm. So essentially, that phone wouldn't need to be different until you started True. to introduce that sort of the more compact that the op gave you the option for big light phone. Mm -hmm. Right. So that, that yeah. would have worked from 1910 until <laughs> probably, probably well into the sixties. If somebody yeah. didn't want to go and buy a new unit. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. Absolutely. We had, we had one, um, not that we used it, but we actually had one with, with still the guts inside of it. Um, mm -hmm. and they were called in, in the farm. Yeah. Phones. Brr, brr, brr. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The ring and, and the whole nine yards. And we, you know, we had it in our house. And um, it was, you know, just as you described, you know, it's, it's very simple construction in the back. It's just one single mm. copper wire, not, yeah. copper, not single copper wire, but it's, but it's braided mm. and, you know, goes out. And it's just literally, it's a one line. It's a one, it's a direct line. There are no, mm -hmm. you know, there was no call waiting or anything like that. It was a direct line. <laughs> yeah, you had to go so into an operator to be connected to a different line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So it was a single line that went through. So if you can imagine, even though it didn't do it in the movie, you know, the phone call seemed like it took a long time. It probably took longer in real, it would take longer in real life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and so that kind of builds up kind of the tension because notice she has to make the call, deliver a message to an unknown person, mm -hmm. and then say, call me back at this number and have mm -hmm. to hang up. Mm -hmm. There is no put you on hold, we'll get uh -huh. your dad and your dad can press the hold button, you know, whatever. Yeah, so there's no extension yeah, either. It's, a, it's not like yeah. dial your main right. number <laughs> and then plug in the three digit so, or four so, digit mm -hmm. extension. So when you stop and think about it, the communication is telegraph. You read the telegraph, you freak out a little bit, you run towards the village phone, the one phone in the village, you make the phone call, you have to ask permission, is it okay if I wait here? You give it to someone, you hang up the phone, that person has to then go to another person or themselves go to your father, mm -hmm. say to your father, oh, your child has done this. And can you imagine if they don't communicate the message correctly? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like, uh -huh. your daughter just called, you know, something, some telegram. It's, it's the telephone game, you know, literally the telephone game. Yeah. yeah. And then mm -hmm. the father would have to go and find a telephone to to call the number. And mm -hmm. it's a direct dial number back. So, yeah. you know, he has to call back and, you know, I mean, talk about like, you know, people on cell phones, you know, you can talk on the cell phone, you can text and, and all that stuff. Back then, you're just like, when you hung up that phone, she was just like, she owned that phone for like yeah. the next hour for a long time <laughs> until she got yep. a phone call. That was yep. it. No one else could use it. That's mm -hmm. that's the thing. No one else can use it. Mm -hmm. and so it, it's just, it, you know, that's just, but yep. I like that. Um, in that, in that, that gives you the time to kind of ramp things up a little bit, your own, as you're watching, mm -hmm. just going, "What is the message? What, yeah. what is yeah. it? What is what's it happening? What's going on?" Saying, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, uh, and again, and I love the fact that you you don't you, you don't get that moment. You cut back to May running around, and then Satsuki tells May. I also love they never find May. Yeah. Right. Mage is wandering around, and Mage sees them and you know, and runs up, um, and that's how that that kind of works. Um, but yeah, and then, gosh, I need to do some different software here. Clearly, with the terrifying goat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Scariest thing in a Miyazaki movie is that goat. Um, <laughs> freakiest thing in the world. Well, I like um, the, I like May's reaction to it. She's like, "No, this corn's for mommy." She's not like right. ah! <laughs> run off down the street. Yeah, um, but no, and, and and again, you know, when have you ever seen Satsuki this subdued? Yeah, right. When she's walking away from this, and, and again, she's not broken down in tears. She's just, you know, uh, um, and then she just gives me the news, and and May has her kind of tantrum. Um, and then you get the line from Suzuki, you know, um, all right, it's fine if mommy dies. And they run off. And it's like, ah! Oh! <laughs> you know, and, and again, 
I spend a lot of time volunteering with kids. This is how they talk. Like, when they get frustrated, this is the kind of things that come out of their mouths. Um, and poor Conta. The filter, the fil- the filter's yep. not there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And poor Conta's um, standing there like, uh, this, th- that, oh, that escalated God. quickly. I mean, and, you know? yeah. <laughs> and then May is, is, sit- is standing there with the corn, by the way, to answer the question in chat land, the, the corn is supposed to be for mom. And yeah, to, to, to help her and 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 actually becomes be important. It becomes important because she thinks that this is if she takes this to her mom, then mom mm-hmm. will be helping, and then she'll be able to come home for the weekend. Child body, yeah, come home for the weekend because she's so bitterly disappointed that yet again her mom got you know a cold, and that means the doctors are just like, well, we just want to make sure. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's just, it's just a disappointed little child. But then Stasky has her little meltdown because at some point you have to. I mean, you, you, yeah. when you're dealing with that for such a long time. And there's mm-hmm. points where you just want to walk into a room and you just take the pillow and go, ah! Mm-hmm. You know? That's the moment she's having. And, and May's disappointed. And then poor Kunta is just like, going, oh. Yeah. Yeah. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, exactly. Where is the hole I can crawl into? Because mm-hmm. I have no idea what to do here. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, totally. And, um, I mean, you know, and you, know, you think Satsuki's had to be a mother, basically. Yeah. Cooking, um, cleaning, watching for May, making sure her dad's got his stuff coordinated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's it's, mothered it's, all of them. It's, it's a lot for a kid. And she's I'm just looking at <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I remember uh, canonically the, uh, the ages here. Um, See here. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, yeah, Wikipedia is not telling me their canonical ages, but I think they're like ten and five. I think. I think something goes on. Um, well, but yeah. is obviously enough to be able to function mm-hmm. and communicate effectively. So five yeah. probably yep. feels about the right age for four or five, something like that. Yeah. Um, and then again, I. Uh, this was the scene at which I was like, Miyazaki's amazing. Um, because you don't get the tantrum. You get the effects of the tantrum. You just get Satsuki laying there and Mei laying there and all the toys scattered all over the place. And it just communicates so much without a single line of dialogue. Um, whereupon... The <laughs> Uh, um, and I love the that... beautiful rendering of the entirety of it. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. off It's off center mm-hmm. where you see Satsuki laying and the room is bare. Yep. And yep. then when you see May, that shot of May mm-hmm. right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Where she's off center. There's just, you know what I mean? There's just this beautiful mm-hmm. detail mm-hmm. in the reflection on the tabletop all of that entirety of that scene and may is just this tiny part of all the rich scene that you're seeing yep amazing it's amazing it is absolutely and yeah you just see that exhaustion of the anger that you didn't see yeah and they're just they're done and then yeah. grandma shows up yeah you, gotta show <laughs> you know thank goodness you gotta love well, that, John. she's well but, and, and then she she does the thing <laughs> where i was like where she goes, oh, it'll be all right. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, it's fine. Um, and then she has, you know, uh, uh, Suzuki, you know, go out there. And she finally finds out that, oh, no, like, this isn't just, you know, it isn't just a cold. Uh, and again, I love how this this leans into this thing of, um, you know, what do you tell a kid when mommy has a serious disease. Oh, it's a cold, she'll be fine. Like, this is running in Satsuki's yeah. head, too. She's She doesn't know what's if she's just being lied to, just straight up. Um, and so Miyazaki does a thing that a lot of directors would not do. Um, he shows Satsuki break down, right in front of your eyes, just right there. Um, and it is, Which kind of pulled me with it when... It, yeah! Now three times into seeing this film, it's the same reaction when she starts mm-hmm. going because it's like yep. she's a little rock through yep. most of this and you so sort of bond to the way that she responds to things and how responsible she's trying to be and then you know her just letting a little bit to jump on Totoro to be little kid like yeah. and then just being washed over with 
this, and it's just like, mm-hmm. oh, 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 yep, feeling that. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, you know, it's it's tough on this kid. Yeah. Um, and, uh, um, and, and and again, and Toshio Okada talks about this, where he says he's not this specifically, but he said every every death has to be earned. Right? You don't just kill off a character to make your audience cry. Um, Satsuki breaks down at this moment, partly because it's natural, but also because that freaks out May. Yeah. That is what triggers May to go, uh-oh, this is serious, I've got to do something. And so that's why she goes off and runs off. And again, I love this. Oh, yeah, there we go. I love that Miyazaki shows you her sandals. Just yeah. briefly, so that later on, when you see the sandals, you're thinking, I saw those, I saw those, what, what, what do they look like, what do they look like, you know, yeah. there's enough information yeah. there for yeah. you to make those connections, it's very brilliant. Um, and then, yeah, and, then she, and the grandma's got the, the sandals. And yeah, oh yeah, praying. You see the people with, the, and the men with the poles. Oh yeah. And, and, you know, and you're just like, oh, I know no one's so, telling, telling you what that is, right. nope. but you know what that is. Yeah, and, and, and so I, that's one of the scenes that I had forgotten. Mm-hmm. So when I saw that, I was just like, I was just like, yeah. That's Christmas. I can't have this. I can't have this. If I see a corn I, corn oh. cob floating in that pond, I'm done. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. Yep. I'm out. Done. <laughs> and this is what was so interesting watching this with a family with kids. Watching the kids just be like, okay, she's lost. And they found her sandal. Okay. And see the parents go. <laughs> yeah. And not saying anything to their kids. Just like, oh, oh, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. That'd be a, that'd that'd be a terrible thing to tell you. them. <laughs> <laughs> they probably turned all their heads at you and were just like, what did you make us <laughs> Oh, yeah. There, there's a little bit of that. Brent, um, no, our children yeah. are gonna have this weird thing about corn and small children. Uh, it's like a lot. Uh, um, I do also, like that the village comes together. Yeah, in this absolutely. that they they as the outsiders mm-hmm. who bought this house for their father to do his university study. Mm-hmm. And Obachan has been coming over and caring for them. Obachan is the link between them and the community. Mm-hmm. And when the chips are down, the entire community shows yeah. up. And I love that line yeah. where, you know, they realize it's, it's not May. And one of the guys goes, well, I guess we got to keep on doing it. And it was like, oh, no problem. No problem. We'll go back to it. You know, we're, we're good. You know, whatever we need to do. Yeah. Um, you know, no one's, no one's eager to stop, so to speak. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever it takes. Exactly. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Um, I also want to call out the use of color in these sequences because um, you know when May um, uh, when we first see all this happen between the two of them, um, you can see, and again it's kind of subtle, um, most of their yard is dark in shadow because it's afternoon. Okay. Right. Um, and as this scene progresses, it's getting later. And later in the day. And it isn't until Satsuki starts running out and you get this. This is what, probably my favorite background, like in all of anime right here. Just, just oh, ugh, the light filtering through the trees. Um, and again, you see that and you start to hear like the crickets in the background. And you're like, oh, it's getting dark. Yeah, dark. Yeah. We don't have to tell you that. Um, and it gets just darker and darker and darker as the series as the as the sequence goes along, um, leading to Tatsuki finally, you know, doing what she has to do to go and find Totoro. Um, whereupon I got to laugh because it's kind of like, and finish up the movie. Um, time, time, time to take care of all of this stuff um, because uh, Totoro goes up, calls the cat bus. Um, cat bus comes over. We find out why the wind blows. Um, the cat bus runs up, grabs Satsuki, uh, takes her in. Um, and I do love, again, talking what you're talking about, this sort of childlike wonder of where Satsuki is, is kind of overwhelmed at this point. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Totoro proceeds to, like, pull her up to the top of the tree and the cat bus shows up. 
Um, but then as soon as she gets into the cat bus, she, just, she starts it melting. And she starts just enjoying her time. Yeah. Um, with, her, with her feet on the floor, where she's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Goes over and sits down. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. And what um, was up with the door noise? The <laughs> It's just a really weird choice of noises for that. I, mean, I thought it was, it was so very distinctive. I made me wonder... Mm -hmm. Where did you come up with that? Yeah. Point of that noise. <laughs> <laughs> it has to sound like something, but it can't sound like a door. What do you, mm. It could sound like a rustle of fur. I mean, but this, yeah. no, it's I'm almost just... like sci fi effect with a. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Where it's like, this is okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's very weird. Sound choices. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so um, uh, we see May at the end of this line of statues. Um, um, and again, I, 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 I love that um, she's sitting there defeated. She's not balled up. You know, she's not lying down. She's like, well, that didn't work. You know? um, again, very, very young child. Um, I love that when, when she hears Satsuki's voice, she immediately looks up and she starts crying again. Um, because again, just kind of like, ah, you know, what, what am I missing? <laughs> well, for this scene too, if you notice the way that May is sitting, mm -hmm. you'll see there is a very clear divide. Mm. You have the statues of traditional Japan, yeah. and you have the coming of the future of Japan, with the high tension power lines, etc. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is a very nice bifurcation of that of that piece right there. Absolutely, um, and I love the fact that you know they kind of hinted that in the cat bus runs across the power lines. You know, it is not held back by Which that. Which I, I love that. that uh. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, really. It's awesome. It's just, just, like, da, da, da. it's just like any other cat just going, I'm on the high attention wire that can work for QB, but it's not because I'm the cat. Right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> the cat bus, I do this all the time. Yeah. Oh, that's how. This is my um. <laughs> and it should be noted, you know, there's obviously Alice in Wonderland parallels here with both the Disbury and also the Cheshire Cat. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, and yeah, and and I think going back to your to your point, John, I think one of the one of the kind of the, the, the points that this movie is making is the fact that like there needs to be this sort of connection, right? That, you know, there needs to be the yokai and the electricity. Right. Um, you know, that all of these things are part of a a um, um, a spectrum? A spectrum, yeah, and, and a timeline, if you will. Well, um, going back to that, that same, when the darkness is coming and May sitting there, the darkness mm -hmm. is on the side of the traditional statues. True. And even though it's sunset, mm. you can also, if you didn't know the context of that frame, yeah, it is sunrise, the rising mm -hmm. of the technology versus the setting of the traditional ways. Absolutely. No, I think you're absolutely right. Um, mm -hmm. then we get this, yeah. and corn. It's always and about corn. corn. It's always about corn. Um, oh, and, corn. Oh, um, and, and this movie where it's like, we, you know, we're out of time. Gotta, gotta finish up. Um, so they, they get back to the hospital. Mommy's fine. It is indeed a, a, a cold and we get the corn. Um, and again, I, I love the fact that there's no connection here that there, you know, that there's no big scene with all of them getting back together and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, because that's not how life works, right? You, you don't get those big resolutions to everything um, uh, in the normal course of events. Um, but of course, um, we do. Because it's a family film, and Miyazaki knows to do that for us. Um, and so uh, they all walk back, and we do get to see, in the end credits, all of them back together again. Yeah. Uh, which, of course, right. all nice and sweet. I um, like the fact that dad and mom, mom's like, I thought I saw them in the tree. And yet, <laughs> it's not like everybody's at the window like, what? What did you see? <laughs> dad picks the corn up, and he's just yeah. like, oh, hey, this is this is corn for you. This is like, did you not notice it was not there like five minutes ago? And you just... You're just totally accepting of whatever's happening. You're like, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool. These things yep. happen. <laughs> And it's addressed to mommy. Yeah. Isn't that a coincidence? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 
that's that, that vendor who sells corn here he corn. knows what's going on. Like, wow. uh, yeah, if I had a criticism of Tetro, is that the ending feels a little rushed. Um, it works, no complaints. Um, uh, but it does kind of throw everything at you there at the end. Um, well, was Miyazaki really aiming to make a a feel good, wrapped up, nice, neat little bow? Or did he want to take you most of the journey and then give you a little, a little, you know, sprinkling of what the mm. happiness should be? But that's not mm. the point of this. Right. That ending is yeah. not the point. It's this, the last bit of the animation you see with them coming, you know, they found May. Everything's cool. Mm -hmm. That's it. Whatever else goes on from there, that's not the point. Yeah. You know, mm. Is that kind of where he was gunning for? I mean, I have no idea. Um um, I do think it's interesting that the final shot of the film is literally the characters walking away from us. Um, kind of like what you're saying, walk, walking into the future, you know? Yeah. We're done. We're, we're moving on um, and, and doing that thing. Um, Oba, Oba Chan is, is the past walking hand in hand mm -hmm. with the youth who are yep. walking towards the future. Yep. So. Exactly. Yep. There we go. Um, all right. We, we should address um, the Totoro as Shinigami story oh, concept um <laughs> so there's this thing going around the internet it's been going on the internet for years that uh no actually totoro is uh the god of death and the entire movie is about how um mei and Setsuki have actually died and totoro is bringing them along and you know making them um um uh accept this and that's why they don't actually interact with anyone at the end you know they're outside the window because they can't see them um and this is them kind of you know, going along and, and doing all that kind of stuff um except for everything that happens after that scene um where they are welcomed back by actual living human beings um maybe it's so, the village of ghosts oh ah, there we go that they're Absolutely. all dun, dun. that that was a that was a mm -hmm. tuberculosis ward ah the ward, there we and go and it's actually abandoned mm -hmm. and that the mother's ghost is so it's really there. so it's really a village of grave of the fireflies so there we are yes yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and Totoro village is 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 lord god of malignant death right a village of the corn one might need exactly. Children um, of the corn. <laughs> the corn. <laughs> um, so, what was this kid's name Malachi. Mm, <laughs> scary. Um, but uh, this is a great example of uh, confirmation bias, where uh, somebody will come up with a theory, and the human brain is really good at finding facts that fit the theory and ignoring all the facts that don't fit the theory. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, if you like watch this movie just straight up, there's lots of things that don't fit into that theory at all, and they just right. don't really connect. But it is fun to say, oh, well, you know, if you're interpreting it that, well, this would kind of make sense, and that would kind of make sense. Um, so it's fun, but no, the theory, the, the logic does not match up with that particular, particular concept. Um, what does match up is the fact that... Um, Miyazaki, uh, this actually does connect to another um, uh, Ghibli film directly. Um, besides just uh, the fact that Totoro shows up in like other movies, kind of in the background, and just like sil silhouettes and such. Right. Easter um, eggs. Easter eggs. Um, so Miyazaki, being Miyazaki, had to come up with a backstory of why Totoro exists, where he came from. And so, according to Toshio Suzuki, his longtime friend and producer, Apparently, there was one day where they just went on this long chat and they built this whole mythology backstory about what happened in the past to create Totoro. And they said, well, okay, so... Um, um, and, and Miyazaki had done a bunch of research and said, so way back thousands of years ago, the Japanese um, uh, islands were actually connected to the mainland. Um, and we can tell this through, like, the geological record. Uh, and then at one point, uh, there was a rise in ocean levels and caused the, the, uh, the islands to be become islands. 
well, if we have gods, then the gods would have been cut off from the mainland along with all these humans who are now there, who are now Japanese, which would have um, caused this big um, conflict between the gods and the humans, because now all these gods crowded on this, or all these humans crowded on this island and they're chopping down trees and so forth. So it would have caused this, this big war, um, um, which would have caused a bunch of the gods to die off, which is why we don't see as many gods around anymore. And so Totoro was one of the survivors of that war. And he was able to um, to survive and kind of thrive by um, not conflicting with human beings, which is why over time he's evolved into this very soft, fluffy creature. Um, and he's even interacted with people in the past, like that kid from the Edo period who gave him his top. Yeah. And that person from the Jomon period who taught him how to make pottery, which is why he has the, the pottery in his, his cave. Um, so he's clearly had some interaction, but he's become, he's made himself very relaxed. Um, and apparently, Miyazaki could not get that backstory out of his head, because ten years later, he would make a movie about the, a conflict between gods and humans about the spirit of the forest. Um... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. And word of God, that is technically the prologue to my neighbor Totoro. <laughs> that that wow. is that is what happened. And that eventually let and you know, Totoro is one of the survivors of that whole conflict and is now and is you know, in the nineteen eighties is now in Japan. So Oh boy. Imagine that. Um and and again it's one of those things where, you know, you you, you're, you're talking to a friend about how this could all work out. You come up with all of this backstory. Ooh, wouldn't it be cool? Ooh, wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool? And then, you know, but you're making the movie. you got to make the movie. And at the end, you're like, that's such a cool story. I just, I, mm, that's such a cool story. i got to tell that story. Yeah. Creativity. Um, wow. Yeah. But yeah, that is My Name is Totoro. Um, any other thoughts? You guys have anything else you wanted to make sure we, uh, we touched on talking about it? I just think that if you want a good, kind of easy, fun anime, mm -hmm. just to mm -hmm. just you know, kind of ninety minutes worth of, I just want Wonderment to almost, but not. I don't want Disney to beat me in the skull <laughs> with a two by four with with it. Mm -hmm. But if you just want something that's easy and, because I think that's one of the big things why I would enjoy this movie is it's, it's mm -hmm. accessible for anybody you can understand what totoro is you can understand right. what the little guys are you know the mm -hmm. little guys are you totally understand what's going on there's nothing heavy like really like mm -hmm. you know the mother's dying of cancer no the mother is recovering and she's having a tough time of it whatever the disease is it's she's on the other side of it but it's it's tough and mm -hmm. it's right. and it's two kids dealing with it and dealing with it with a friendly if you even if you don't know Eastern mythology or not right. mythology, but, but hmm. spiritualism and, and religion, you still kind of get the sense of this kind of like particularly when they're praying in front of the tree of just like okay, there's something benign here. Mm -hmm. There's something that is maybe not inherently good but inherently caring, and that's right. kind of a nice message to have out there. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it, you don't need to know anything about Kami or Shinto or anything to just right. enjoy this mm -hmm. for exactly what it is. It's it's a nice it's a nice mm -hmm. gentle film. I mean, there's nothing okay. as odd as that is to say that it's like, oh, there's no high points or low points. <laughs> it doesn't need that. That's not what it's doing. It's it is good by by in and of itself. And that's the amazing thing. This is a movie with no villain, with no really no conflict in a movie hollywood movie sense yeah um you know there are characters who disagree you know here and there but you know by the standards of conflict it's you know, da, da, da yeah. here. <laughs> uh, i mean hmm. um, low, and yet low simmer <laughs> yeah exactly and yet you know i've shown this movie to six-year-olds and to 60-year-olds and they're both equally entranced yeah mm -hmm. it's a it's a lovely thing so, uh, yeah, so that is my name is Totoro. Um, thank you, Jabez. You're right. Tsukumogami. 
is the term for um, the the sort of creatures that come out of trash and so forth. The sort of oh. soot sprite ana um, uh, analogous creatures. Um, there an anime that was just last season that was called Sugumomo. Probably. That was about a sentient obi. Oh. That was a kid inherited his mother's huh. obi, and it was a okay. beloved treasured object, and mm. it was therefore in, empowered with the spirit of a kami. There we go. Oh, wow. Makes sense. Yeah. That, that, yep. that sounds exactly like it. Um, cool. Uh, so let's take a quick break. We'll be back in a few minutes to talk about the news and such. Um, so we'll see you in a little bit. In the meantime, study your anime trivia. Be back Ooh. in a moment. 